Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I just noticed that I never did a review for episode 2 of Dimer, so I'm going to do a review for episode 2 of Dimer. Uh, obviously episode 3 is out net yet, I'm still waiting to watch it. But for episode 2 of Dimer, it was interesting to see where the show is heading and to see Goku trying to get used to his his younger form again and obviously having to get the pole and like, you know, the power pole and all that. Like it's pretty cool to see the show going in a direction that is playing into nostalgia that would be very Toriyama. I mean, there are aspects of this that you can see Toriyama was all over, the inside jokes and so on. And it is nice to see Daimer. It's nice to see so many of the fandom coming back together to watch a show all together, no matter whether you're Spanish speaking, whether you're English speaking, no matter where you live in the world, whether you're Australian, whether you're UK, whether you're New Zealand, whether you're US, whether you're Japan, whether you're wherever in the world. So many of us are coming back together like we all did with Super and we're all kind of reuniting watching this show and experiencing it all together. Now obviously when Super was on air we all experienced it through unofficial means because the dub still hadn't happened, the licensing was still way behind and a lot of us were just saying well, we want to kind of watch it as it's happening. We want to see the fight with Jiren and Goku and a lot of us were watching live streams of the channels in, a, in Japan on the internet trying to watch it as it was happening. and. Now we don't have to do that because it's all available at the same time. It's pretty cool. Um, and yeah, obviously longer episodes. These are 30 minute episodes, which I really enjoy. I like that they've went that extra little few minutes. Obviously no ads in there because it was built for streaming. Obviously there are ads in there when it's on TV, but you know, if you get crunchy roll over, you're not really going to see that. But it's still cool that we are in 2024 and we are getting new Dragon Ball content like Obviously, um, I've noticed that new game out that's kind of like Budokai, but I haven't got my hands on that yet. I haven't really, really went out and bought it. I am going to buy it at some point. I'm just going to wait for a sale, though. But um, I think it's like Sparkling, Sparkling Zero or something. I, I know the name of it, but I forgot it. It slips my mind right now. But I am going to get my hands on that at some point. I really want to play that one. But isn't it cool that we have so much Dragon Ball content right now? We are getting more and more Dragon Ball content, and... I think it's amazing. Obviously, this honors the legacy of Kira Toriyama to see his final vision. Now, obviously, he wasn't going in and out on the series. This is probably the most he's done in terms of work on a series. But it's not like he was there hand animating the thing himself. Like, he would have been guiding the animators at uh, Toei Animation. Like, hey, I want this done. I want it to look like this. This has to go like this. And he would have been telling him how he wants it structured and how he wants the show to look overall. So this is probably the closest we get outside of the manga to seeing how Akira Toriyama wanted it to look. And it would be cool. I mean, a lot of aspects of this show is kind of reminiscent of GT. But it's not GT. And I w it is nice to see some aspects of GT in here. I mean, obviously, I want to see how... I want to see a few more aspects. I want to see how Gohan looks in this show. Because is he going back to teen Gohan? Is he going back to ch kid Gohan? I'm very interested to know how that looks. But also, it would be interesting to see, like, where the show goes overall. I mean, we're all watching it at the same time. We're all kind of wrapping our heads around Dragon Ball uh, Daimer at the same time. And as a collective fandom, it's nice to see us all together again. <laughs> and just all on the internet talking Dragon Ball. We haven't had that since Super Finish. I mean, we kind of had it briefly with Broly. And then we kind of had it with Superhero, although the fandom wasn't really talking as much about Superhero. I mean, we were all talking about it, but it wasn't like Broly where it was such a huge love character that everyone was like, yeah, Broly's canon, yes, yes. It was like, yeah, okay, cool. Cell's kind of, yeah, whatever. And, you know, androids and okay, yeah, Red Ribbon. But it's one of those things where you can kind of see um, Toriyama really influential in this show you can see the stylistic choices that he's made the little inside jokes the little animation styles that only Toriyama would pick up on and I mean look Toyotaro is I think the heir apparent I mean there are other animators in that organization who look after Dragon Ball but you have to think all the animators all the super guys everyone will be working to get this looking as good as possible and I like that it was basically almost done in terms of the series. I mean, they're still animating it now, but I like that it was almost done in terms of the series before they released it. The problem with Super and why Super looked so bad early on was because they were rushing it. They were, they were literally animating it 
a couple of days before it was going to air. It was the South Park style, I'll call it. It was like, you know, South Park can throw together an episode really quickly and have it to air. But whereas South Park really, really take that on and really, really hammer home that, it doesn't work for Dragon Ball. You need to take time with animation, especially animation that is greatly loved and defines essentially a country. I mean, I think Goku was considered at one point the most famous anime character ever. And obviously people say, oh, but what about Pokemon? What about this? What about that? It included Pokemon. It included Yu-Gi-Oh! It included Sailor Moon. It included everyone. And Goku was still voted number one. And he was the mascot for the Olympics for a reason. And yeah, it's cool to really see. Um, I mean, there was a quote when uh, Funimation got the original rights to the show where the guy who got it said, the hard part for me, the disconcerting part for me was he had to take it to the American, the highest up in America and say, hey, I've basically got Mickey Mouse in my hands and they don't even know I've got Mickey Mouse in my hands. Like we've got this right to this show that is loved around the world and they don't even know I've got Mickey Mouse. So it's interesting, you know? And yeah, I really enjoyed episode two of Daima. I think it was cool to see like even Mr. Popo's kid form seeing like stuff you typically wouldn't see. I mean, the interactions between Gohan and Goten, uh, yeah, Gohan and Goten, not Gohan, um, Trunks and Goten. And like seeing uh, Vegeta and all that, like, like Piccolo trying to get used to his body and, you know, I think it is really cool to see where this show is going to go. I mean, it could copy Super, it, uh, not Super, it could copy GT. I would like to see it go the route of GT or at least add up some aspects. But as I said in episode one's review, I feel like this is Toriyama's like, not like an F you to the <laughs> everything GT did, but like, oh, GT is not much loved. I wonder if we kind of take some aspects. I did like that aspect. Like, I'm sure Super Saiyan 4 is going to show up at some point. It would make sense. But, I mean, the Saiyans don't even have their tails back, so we kind of have to fix that first. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. And, yeah, um, it's just cool to have Dragon Ball back on the air. And I'll end on that. Catch you in the next one, guys. And leave a comment. Let me know what you thought of episode two.